Despair and hope are the same thing. You want something you can't have, is a statement by one of the characters in 86. Personally, I disagree. They're not the same thing. And the way I saw it, 86 showed the difference between those two. Just like Attack on Titan did. Before the anime started airing, I heard a lot of people say that this could become the next Attack on Titan. But does it really have that potential? Well, there are a lot of parallels between the two stories, but also major differences. Let's take a look at them in this review, and as usual, this is spoiler free. In a similar fashion to Attack on Titan, there is a population safely hiding behind walls from an outside threat, while brave soldiers defend them on the outside. But that's also where the differences start. The soldiers on the outside are not allowed back inside the relative safety of the walls of San Magnolia. They are treated as even more expendable than the Survey Corps in Attack on Titan. In fact, they are not only stripped of their human rights, but declared not to be human at all anymore. Because of that, the government of San Magnolia can claim that their mechs called Juggernauts are unmanned drones, even though they actually do need a human pilot. But since they are using these soldiers without human rights, the Juggernauts are counted as autonomous. Just like the actual autonomous drones from their enemy, the former Geared Empire, which is now called the Legion. These soldiers piloting the Juggernauts are the 86, named after the district they were put in when the war started 9 years ago. All of the 86 are Colorado and differ from the Alba living in the other 85 districts of San Magnolia in their hair and eye color. While all of the Alba have silver hair and silver eyes, the 86 display all kinds of hair and eye colors. These traits show that their ancestors were immigrants from other countries, including the Giyot Empire. Even though most of the Colorado lived their entire lives in San Magnolia, the Alba officials used this connection to their enemy to use the Colorado as scapegoats and put them in camps in the 86 district. From there on they were called the 86 and stripped of their humanity. But if these 86 join the military, they are promised that they and their families will be allowed back inside the other districts, since they would have proven their loyalty in that case. The 86 who pilot the Juggernauts are called Processors and each unit of processors has an ALBA handler assigned to them. Through a device called the Power Rate, the handlers can verbally communicate with the processors without needing to be physically present. Therefore, the handler can sit safely behind the walls while the 86 actually have to face the terrifying battlefield. The story of 86 shows the perspective of these processors with the main focus being on Shin Nuzen and the handler of their unit, an ALBA called Bloody Lena Milizi, mostly referred to as Lena. 86 may feature mechas instead of giant man-eating titans, but just like Attack on Titan, 86 is a gripping story about survival, inequality, propaganda and humanity. 86 deals with a lot of hard topics. I don't want to get into spoilers, but the treatment of the 86 will make you feel intense anger, shock and frustration. But the author didn't just paint the Alba as pure evil. Even though the majority is scum, there are good people among them, who really try their best to right the wrongs committed by their peers. But there are also those who are afraid and feel powerless, who tell themselves that there is nothing they can do, or those who are disillusioned and don't want to fight the government anymore. The story also touches on a topic how dangerous propaganda can be. In this story it is used to tell the citizens of San Magnolia that each day the war is fought with unmanned juggernauts, that there were no casualties again. Hearing that after seeing the battle from the perspective from a processor made my stomach turn. But the citizens who see those news don't suspect that they are being lied to, or don't want to. So yeah, 86 features really harsh topics, which makes it the first light novel I picked up to do so. But the author refrained from moralizing the reader in heavy-handed sentences, so the messages he wanted to convey never felt preachy. Which leads me to my next point. The author is great when it comes to show don't tell. From the relatively long setup section, you might have already noticed, this light novel is high concept. But despite there being a lot of exposition needed to explain the overall situation, it was done bit by bit and included in the plot really well. It took me a while to get attached to the characters, because they don't feel all that fleshed out yet. If I had to describe each of them, the characteristics that pop into my head are rather superficial and there were no breathtaking character arcs yet. But since this is the first book, it had to deal with a lot of exposition. So there was not that much time to develop the characters. If you are a very character focused reader like me, this is still a weakness though. Other than that, the only complaint I have concerns the last two chapters. There is a huge leap in time, glossing over a lot of stuff that happened in between. The second book, however, picks up where the story left off before that time leap. 
but due to that last chapter, I already knew who would survive the events of the second volume, which did take away a lot of the thrill I felt while reading the first book. So if you plan on reading the second volume and want to avoid spoilers, I recommend that you skip these last two chapters and come back to them after reading the third volume, since the second volume didn't cover all the events that happened before the time jump in the first novel. My guess is that the author wasn't sure if his light novel would get popular enough and wanted to give a conclusion to the story in case it would not get serialized. But in hindsight, I think it would have been better to exclude these two chapters from the first book. Is the anime adaptation any good? Hell yeah! The art style is incredible. The animators at A1 Pictures outdid themselves with this one. The CGI looks just a little bit clunky at times, but that didn't bother me in the least because it was mostly applied to the mechs. And if their movements look clunky, that can just be as well attributed to their mechanical movements. At least that's how my brain chose to deal with it. Overall, the CGI was really good though, don't get me wrong. I just generally prefer 2D animation over 3D animation, but I get why they use it more and more. And to hammer down the point that this wants to be the next Attack on Titan, they hired the Hans Zimmer of Anime to do its soundtrack. Hiroyuki Sawano does as usual a great job with the soundtrack for this one. I think my favorite track is Legion's Attack, because it fits the mecha genre and tone really well. The opening song was… meh. I don't know, it was alright, but it didn't really fit the tone of the anime. It was a bit too cheerful, so I like the ending of 86 a lot better. In the anime, they also included some scenes of the scavenger drone Fido's perspective in episode 10, which made me appreciate the characters a lot more than I did before. Overall, I connected much more to the characters in the anime, because they got more of a personality through all the details and animation to their expressions. But that might also be related to me having read the light novel first. Because of that, I already knew the characters and the plot and may have focused on getting to know the characters better instead of concentrating on the plot. I really liked this adaptation. It was just 11 episodes long so far and only covers the first book without these last two spoiler-like chapters I mentioned before. Instead, the anime chose to adapt a part of chapter 2 from the second volume of the light novels. In my opinion, that was a good choice, since in the novels the jumps between the timelines felt a bit jarring and this continuous progression of the plot makes for a more enjoyable and thrilling experience of the story. I'm curious how they will keep adapting the light novels in the upcoming second season of the anime. But so far I think it's a faithful adaptation that didn't disappoint me as a fan of the light novel and definitely didn't disappoint me as a fan of anime. I'm totally psyched for the next season and I hope they will keep up adapting it this way. And I would wholeheartedly recommend this to fans of Attack on Titan and mecha anime. The plot was great and especially exposition was handled really well. I love high concept plots but I hate it when the first thing we get is a huge info dump. Fortunately, this was not the case here. In 86, I immediately had a lot of questions without being confused though, and the author Asato Asato did a great job at answering them at the right time while also making it an interesting revelation. So the plot gets a 5 out of 5 from me. The characters were solid, I liked a lot of the processors, Raiden and Andrew in particular, and I thought that Lena and her friend Annette were interesting characters on the side of the Alba. Shin felt a bit generic, but I still liked the chapters from his perspective. Overall, the characters were a bit too shallow for me to give them a perfect score, but they deserve a 4 out of 5. The author Asato Asato put a lot of work into the world building of 86. It is really detailed and makes the world feel realistic to a scary degree. It explores the questions of what if an AI went rogue in a really good way, and as it takes a deep look at the darkest side of humanity, it also contrasts it with the good sides. Throughout the story, the world building felt very grounded and I didn't find parts that didn't make sense to me. So the world building is a 4.5 out of 5 for me. The illustrations made by Shirabi in the light novel are great and the artwork in the anime is stunning. Super detailed and the colors fit the tone of each scene perfectly. I love the art style and I think a lot of hard work went into the production of these amazing shots. So the art deserves nothing less than a 5 out of 5. Comparing the prose of this light novel to others I've read, the quality of its prose does stand out, and I was completely immersed in the story at all times. Sometimes the descriptions of the battles were a bit confusing though, and I had to read passages over to fully grasp what was happening. So the prose gets a 4 out of 5 from me. The soundtrack of the anime is great, but Savano suffers from the same problem as Hans Zimmer. Having a recognizable style is good, but listening to the soundtrack I could hear a lot of similarities to Savano's other tracks like from Guilty Crown or Carbonari. I know this is true for a lot of composers, but the problem remains. The soundtrack lacked uniqueness. 
However, it's still high quality soundtrack and deserves a 4 out of 5. I really like both the first volume of the light novel series as well as the first season of the anime adaptation. Even though I had trouble at first connecting to the characters, now weeks after reading the light novel and days after finishing the anime, I keep thinking of them. So I guess I connected more to them than I initially thought. But in any case, I love both the light novel and its anime adaptation. So for overall enjoyment, both deserve a 5 out of 5. Okay, let's get back to the question whether this could become the next Attack on Titan or not. As I said before, the two share common themes and both got an amazing anime adaptation. Attack on Titan had more of a thrill to it though. At least at the beginning, 86 focuses more on the awful discrimination against the Colorado instead of the despair on the battlefield. Also, I find the characters in 86 more sympathetic and more relatable than in Attack on Titan. But Attack on Titan left me more awestruck after each episode. And I want to make clear, 86 is its own story and not just an Attack on Titan clone with mechas instead of titans. So yeah, I'd say both anime are great in their own way. And I think as a fan of Attack on Titan, you will most likely enjoy 86. Speaking of enjoyment, I hope you liked this review and I could convince some of you to pick up the light novel or to watch the first season of the anime. I'm really happy that it turned out to be such a high quality adaptation. I already read the second volume of the light novel and will make a review of that too shortly. Thank you for watching this review and I hope to see you in future videos. Anyway, farewell.